Hi, this is Tom Mood, and today I would like to talk a little bit about uh, addictions and some circumstances around addictions. And uh, I personally have been walking through uh, several addictions. And one of the things that strike me with addictions is how similar they are when it comes to the math, the math, mathematics of my mind, how similar they operate with my mind. I noticed very, I noticed very clearly that that an alcohol addiction or a porn addiction or a weed addiction, they operate very much the same way mathematically technically in my mind. Something I've come to realize also is that uh, the word addiction, and it's like addiction, a diction, a story, a diction, addiction, a diction of words, addiction that is a story, meaning that all people who suffer from severe drug addiction, typically, uh, all, all of them have uh, trauma from, 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 the, from the background, from the childhood trauma. And almost all people have some sort of trauma behind them in their living. And um, people who are very addicted to, or people who are, excuse me, addicted to, to strong drugs, all of them have bad trauma and they have been literally pissed upon and spit upon since they were young children, being bullied in school and all that, falling out of society, never being able to have some stability, some sanity, some decency in their living and they're forced to medicate themselves with street mafia drugs and survive in that game basically trying to stay out of the sight of the police and so on so you know we would like to create a society so good that we don't don't have to use drugs to cope All of us would like to create a society that is that good that we do not need drugs to medicate. And by those terms, it is important to understand the math, the technical and the um, design of the systems that keep us uh, addicting. Me, I can, ex I can talk for myself basically which is that when I would medicate with alcohol or, or, or drugs, I would use that to escape into a new reality, into a better, a positive, a high, something not real, basically, an imaginative world of non-reality. Non All, everything locked and stuck in systems in my mind While the real issues, the trauma, the drama, my memories were not dealt with. And for me, when I grew up, when I was like a young boy, there, were, there are two, a few things that I see that, are, that were, that were um, in lack from my, from my part, which was trust uh, trust in the adults and vocabulary and tools to work on myself. Trust in adults and in, and in institutions, a, 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 a full and complete vocabulary, um, 
and the tools to work on myself. Today we have all this if we if we want to basically. I mean the trust is a big one to be able to trust one's surroundings. And very many of us live lives that are not where we're not trained to be trust, trusting ourselves because how can I how can I trust another person? If I do not fully and completely trust myself, how can I trust another being if I don't 100% can rely on myself in what I do in thought, word, and deed? So, within trust, it is important to walk a process of self-forgiveness to equalize the self, to understand self, to improve self and to learn to trust the very self. With vocabulary, you know, it is important that children learn words, full-on words, uh, from early on, that they learn full words as soon as possible, uh, as young as possible, and that they learn a variety of words, many words, complicated words, you know, and that they can learn that um, there are no words that are out of their uh, boundaries, basically that. They shouldn't be learning these words because it's got to do with blah, 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 blah. And um, and, um, and also, um, and also the tools to work on self. And one of the best tools to ever work on this self process is to forgive the self, to forgive the the, the past pre program, the pre the past systems that have been holding one into addictions, to forgive all the trauma, to forgive all the drama, and the bothers of memory and mind, to forgive it all in great detail. Over time, in the quantum, quantum forgiveness. So the addiction is a diction of words, a addiction of words, a story of words, a, lots of writings, meaning that people who suffer from addictions have a lot of stories, basically, behind them in their childhood and so on. That they all have stories and trauma and drama and events that, and events that happen to them that they are carrying in within themselves as cancer, as schizophrenia, as HDAD, as, as illnesses, basically, as sickness. Okay? And as long as they carry all this, bur all this burden, all this pain, all this trauma, all this drama, all these thoughts, all these reactions, all this internal war, all this constant thinking, thinking, thinking processes, as long as they carry that, you know, as long as we carry that, that is what we will see. That is what the world will respond to us according to that. As long as I go around carrying suppressed and denied and, or, or, you know, as long as I go carrying my trauma, my drama, my, my illnesses, that is what will be reflected back at me. So within, so without, basically. And again, I cannot emphasize how important it is to start as soon as possible a process of forgiving the self. I will leave some links to that. And please feel free to contact me about how to start learning self-forgiveness for real. Um, because we all would like to see this into you know, a better world, a better life for all, 
where we typically don't have to use drugs to, to medicate, to cope in our world, to live in our world, but where we can have a more balanced, equilibrium, peaceful, uh, equal and one society based upon that which is best for all and not just uh, not, not, uh, not what we see today basically which has been for eons of time uh, living hell more or less so you know as long as we have as long as we don't have systems or what's the institutions that can properly care for drug addicts you know they should have their they sh they should get their be able to get their their, their drugs uh, anyhow they should be get, they should be granted their drugs their heroin or their or their amphetamine or their the drug that they uh, need to medicate themselves and by doing this we would take away take away <laughs> endless amount of crime basically from society prostitution and such things such occurrences for and, and theft and robbery to uphold the high um, to uphold the um, value and the, and the and the crime in this because it costs a lot and these drugs should rather be provided to these people who who are ill, who are addicted, who have trauma in their back baggage. They should be drawn to this weed or this heroin or whatever that they need from a system point and not lost in mafia and crime, which is, you know, what has been. So putting people in prison doesn't help anything. We know this anywhere there are no uh, science that prove whatsoever that putting people in prison is, uh, is helping them to recover from their trauma from to become better persons basically so we need to start working on the self you know and being either in an institution or, or just you start right now to work on self, to heal the self with self-forgiveness, to learn new, you know, to learn new stuff, to learn new words, to learn to trust the self. Because the government sometimes talk about trust and to have a, to have a trust in society. And I call that bulk bullshit because hardly any of us human beings on earth today are able to trust ourselves even. Because we don't know how sneaky, how devious, how cheating, how nasty our mind, our thoughts and so on can be. Because we all, um, we all have this mind and which the church calls for God and the science calls for the mind and you know there's the polarity or the split of mind with the church call it the God <laughs> and, and, and science and psychology call it the mind so for me it's about becoming grounded and stable in my very physical to ground my beingness into my body from having walked um, eight years now, eight, eight years now with self-forgiveness, to unite with myself, to, to, to puzzle myself back together um, through addictions, through emotions, through, birth, through all these things that I've been going through, uh, schizophrenic design, thought design, Imaginative design, beliefs, personalities, memories, trauma. Because one thing I learned was, for instance, that when I would smoke weed, there would be like this energy addiction to it, like this positive high, this loving high positive feeling to smoking weed. 
They were, it would be like a, 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 a separate world uh, of imaginative, imaginative, a separate world within me, according to that. And what I found out is that from the core of it, from the mathematics of it, when I would start to jog and work out, I would stimulate the same kind of math, the same kind of polarity, the same kind of positivity in my body. So that the addiction was there on the same terms, on the same mathematical terms. Either it wasn't with weed or it was with working out. And I investigated this and I'm sure that you can find the same thing. Maybe drinking Coca-Cola or believing in God or, or addicting to, to video games or porn or whatever. That you, the same core construct of polarity is there. The mathematics of mind, the mathematics of addictions in mind is very much the same. No matter what substance or activity that goes on. Okay, and we would need, and the big question is to answer is why do we need to run into this alternate imaginative reality? Why do we need to escape from our true self, from the physical, responsible, trusting self? Why would I want to run away from me with with weed, with hushes, with God, with video games, with porn, with whatever? Why do I need to run away into a, into a secluded chamber in my mind where there is blah, 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 nonsense, imaginative, imaginative world? Why would I need to run, run into a corner of my mind that is a, is a magnation and a fantasy and illusion and non-reality? And when I do that, I'm supporting a lie. I'm supporting non-reality. And what will happen is that it will bubble over and create all sorts of freaky and sick and, and you know and hideous sicknesses, you know. From thinking a lot about it, from desiring it, from imagining it, from, from, from planning how to not be seen, not be noticed, but still having the weed health level, the whatever. And all these constructs of our mind that keep us inferior. It is important. <laughs> it is important in this uh, to not fear one's mind or reject one's mind. Okay, the mind is there. It's a part of me. I cannot just say say please go away and leave me alone. The mind will be with me, ever how uh, peculiar that is, in this lifetime. What I need to do is understand it in great great detail. And that can only be done through a process of forgiving it in great, great detail. And yes, it's a lot of work, but we have to do this. This is the step. This is the step that we have to take over and over and over again until we can create a safe path for ourselves to walk on in the, in the name of self-forgiveness, in the name of self-trust, responsibility and self-honesty. I have already walked a lot of this. Luckily for me, there were other people who were walking a few years before me and, and, and at the same time as me. And I've had great benefit of learning from them. Because they may have, may have walked something before me. I can look at videos about whatever addiction or whatever mind system or thought system or, 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 or system that they are facing. And I can learn from them. You know? So, as much as I want to say that we... Um, we have to do this. It's it's um, it's the step that we have to take, the final step that we have to, because because you know look around you. It's the, we have to make this into a good place for all. Okay. 
We have to make this into a, a world that we in self-honesty would like to be born back into. So this is a call for self-responsibility, basically, and self-honesty. Um, for me, jogging with self schizophrenia, self-forgiveness has been a, the very finest tool that I could ever imagine. And... It is for me to ground myself, ground my being, my universal being, the part of me that have, has an infinite potential, to ground that into my physical, to be the living change, like Gandhi said, to be the change you want to see in the world, it starts with you, starts with me. But we have to do it all the way, meaning all the dirty, little, tiny, hidden, lost and suppressed chambers in our mind, our secret mind, or nastiness, all of it has to be taken out to be forgiven by the self. And there is no other way. We cannot medicate away this. We have to forgive it to ourselves. And the world is waiting for us to do that. Children, animals, nature, the oceans, the mountains, the trees, the bugs. We're all in this process together to create equilibrium on earth, to create a utopia, if you like, a good place for all. It's in the making, it's in the zeitgeist, it's in everything. But we are, you know, we're waiting for you and me to start with forgiving the self for what I, what for what I have accepted and allowed in thought, word, and deed in my living. To forgive it all in great detail, to release it and find stability, find trust, self-honesty as the physical, sanity, flesh, living flesh of man. Yes. Because it is from there in the physical reality in the physical reality that we have the potential for true creation and what should I say miracles practically because our mind our imaginative illusionary mind have kept us slave for so long I mean I, I but I must embrace my mind and I must work with my mind I cannot reject it or, de or deny my mind I have to work with it but I have but, I have to, but the most important is to understand the mind and learn how to direct that, okay? To learn to understand the mind and learn how to direct it. And that can only be done through a lengthy process of self-forgiveness. Thinking will only overcomplicate this. Thinking and beliefs will only make this much harder than uh, it's, uh, it is. Breathing, working out, eating healthy, go doing healthy activities, writing to self, learning new things, playing guitar, learn Spanish, do all these things that can help us. Stable breath. And I would like to emphasize writing and to learn to forgive the self. Um... Because it is when I write that I can see what is occupying my mind. When I write in self-honesty, just I write in self-honesty, I can see what is in my mind system, what are, where are my thoughts, why are my thoughts there, and so on. To forgive all the trauma, to forgive the drama, and become reliant, become trustworthy. Become equal and one, basically to create and manifest a better reality. And what that, how that is going to play out, we don't know yet, but 
it's in the making and we are going to create this into a better place for all but you know now you know that we're counting on you to to work on self and you know if people ignore this and just ignores this message you know now you heard it now you heard it and there's no going turning back because you have the responsibility just as much as me just as much as me okay to forgive the self and release self from these energies these addictions so that we sometime in the future can live without needing drugs and medicine and alcohol and all these things to escape into an alternate non-reality imaginative world so we don't need hushes or or or, or, or all the amphetamine all these things to escape into an alternative non-reality but we can be find stability comfort dignity honest responsibility honesty trust in the physical reality of self and not in the fling fling of mind but to embrace that to learn it to understand it to forgive it and then later on direct it but find stability groundedness breath in the physical in the flesh ground the being and yeah you get the picture if you have questions about self-forgiveness or schizophrenia or anything, let me know. We are here. Let's do this. Thank you and enjoy.